Good evening, Cleveland and Columbus sports fans. This is Jen B. And you're tuned in live to the show of the land on IE Sports Radio with Rec B for all that is sports. Tonight, we're going to talk some Browns football, the return of Deshaun Watson, how things went against Arizona, some injury updates, and some roster changes. And then we will move on to some college football with the MAC matchup between Kent State and Akron and the Big Ten matchup between Ohio State and Rutgers, along with some others. And then we will move on to the Guardians, some roster changes, some awards, and a new manager. We will also talk about the Monsters and the Columbus Blue Jackets and how they're doing this hockey season. We'll move on to the Cavs' last few games and we'll end with the Crew's playoff run. So let's get started with some Browns. So Deshaun Watson practiced Wednesday through Friday last week. He was limited Wednesday and Thursday, full participant on Friday, and he was removed from the injury report on Friday. Then uh, Dewan Jones, who was injured in the previous game, returned to practice on Thursday. Dewan Jones is also the highest rated rookie offensive tackle in pass protection, and he was a fourth round pick. So that's some nice berry magic right there. David Bell, Greg Newsom, and Alex Wright were all ruled out for the Arizona game. Dewan Jones was listed as questionable but did play. Uh, during the week, they signed offensive tackle Leroy Watson, and then they elevated James Prochi II from the practice squad, and he ended up being the uh, kick returner during the game. Through week eight, the Browns defense has allowed had allowed only 88 first downs. The next closest team was at 122. So pretty great stuff from the Browns defense. Uh, on Sunday, of course, the Browns played the Arizona Cardinals against rookie quarterback Clayton Toon. And as soon as I saw that they named him the starter, I said, I feel so bad for him having to start his first NFL game against Miles Garrett and the rest of the Browns defense. And I wasn't wrong. Poor thing was sacked seven times and shut out 27 to zero. It was the Browns first shutout in 251 games. So... It was about due. Uh, Deshaun Watson played the entire game. He played fairly well. There, you know, you could definitely see some, a little bit of rust with him having been out the last few weeks and uh, not really having had time to really a hundred percent get his feet under him in the Browns' offense. But he did well. No turnovers. So that in and of itself is a huge improvement over the last seven weeks. So we'll take it. The defense did record three turnovers. So we actually won the turnover battle. I think it's the first time we've won the turnover battle and the second time that we haven't been on the wrong side of the turnover battle. We were even in one other game. I believe it was the Tennessee game. Uh, Denzel Ward and Sione Takitaki both recorded interceptions and there was a fumble recovery from a strip sack by Shelby Harris. The fumble was recovered by Miles Garrett. In the third quarter, Jedrick Wills was carted off with a knee injury. It has been reported as an MCL and PCL sprain along with some bone bruising. He has been moved to IR and is expected to miss four to six weeks. Marquise Goodwin went out with a concussion and is in the concussion protocol. Cam Mitchell 
had a hamstring injury and has now been placed on IR as well. So he will be out for at least four weeks. The defense allowed only 58 total yards. The third lowest in Brown's history. And, and uh, it was just an all and out great game. There were not a lot of mistakes. There, you know, Deshaun Watson had some incomplete passes. The receivers had some drops. A, a few of the passes, it was like, how do you not catch that? What are you doing? You're a football player. Your job is to catch the ball. It hit you in the hands. Why didn't you catch that? But I think it's uh, getting reused to Deshaun Watson after playing with P.J. Walker the last couple of weeks. And uh, just, you know, Deshaun Watson's a completely different quarterback than the backups. So, you know, it'll it'll take some time to get back to it. But, you know, we'll get there. Uh, hopefully <laughs> by next week. <laughs> Um, the Browns made a few roster changes today uh, with uh, Jedrick Wills and Cam Mitchell being placed on IR. They signed a James Prochi the second to the active roster, and they also signed Jerron Christian, who is an offensive tackle, to the um, active roster. And then they signed Trinity Benson, a wide receiver, Vincent Gray, a safety, and Justin Murray, a tackle, to the practice squad. And they released Devin Asiasi, tight end, from the practice squad. And next week, we are at Baltimore, which is the game of the year. This game is going to tell us everything we need to know about this Browns team. It sucks that we're going into this game Without our starting left tackle, uh, as of now, Stefanski is saying that, uh, and I just completely lost the kid's name, James Hudson. James Hudson will play left tackle um, in place of Jedrick Wills. Um, but, you know, they did sign a tackle today, and they have a couple of tackles on the practice squad. Um so, so we'll see how that ends up uh, playing out all in all. And James Hudson did come in for the end of the game after Jedrick Wills got hurt and he played fairly well, but he is not Jedrick Wills. So, and I know everybody thinks Jedrick Wills is awful, but let me tell you, we're all going to see how not awful he is coming up. I, I, I promise. <sighs> Sigh. These injuries, I'm telling you. Our first, first Nick Chubb, then Deshaun Watson. Oh, wait, no. Take that back. First, Jack Conklin, then Nick Chubb, then Deshaun Watson, and now Jedrick Wills. So, you know, it is what it is. I mean, the good thing is, Deshaun Watson is really good at uh, making things happen, even if the offensive line doesn't hold up. So we'll see. But hopefully, hopefully with a week of practice under his belt, James Hudson will do just fine in Baltimore. But we'll see. I am hoping for a close game, a good, strong game. On both sides of the ball for the Browns. Well, all three sides of the ball for the Browns. Um, Corey Bajorquez has been unbelievable with his punting this year. He had a 73-yard punt against the Cardinals. Um, so, and then, you know, Dustin Hopkins did miss a field goal this week, but it didn't matter because we won 27 to nothing. But <laughs> it's one of... Very few misses he's had. He has still made every field goal of 50-plus. That field goal that he missed against the Cardinals was a 40-some-yard field goal. And it was long enough. It just went off to the right a little bit too soon. Like, literally, right before the right before the goalpost. Like, I had to wait for the refs to signal it because it was hard to tell on TV if it was good or not. Because it was over the goalposts. 
so it was hard to tell if it was if it was good or not so we had to kind of wait for the signal on that one but um, it wasn't too far off and a slight adjustment would fix that so I'm not too worried about that it is what it is and it didn't matter in this game so there you have it so now let's move on to some college football so Kent State and Akron played each other on Wednesday Akron was up seven to six the end of the first quarter Kent State was up 20 to 10 by the end of the half Kent State was up 27 to 10 the end of the third but wait Akron came back the final score 31 to 27 Akron shock I was shocked I was absolutely shocked I knew I knew Akron was bad I didn't realize that Kent State was worse <laughs> So, <laughs> um, Akron's next game is tomorrow, and they will be playing at Miami of Ohio, and Kent State's next game is also tomorrow, and they will be playing Bowling Green. Akron's Jeff Undercuffler was named MAC Offensive Player of the Week, so... We'll see what happens with them tomorrow. Ohio State has a few award nominees. Brent Jones, defensive back, has been nominated for the Burlesworth Trophy. Tommy Eichenberg, JTT, Denzel Burke, and Tyleek Williams are on the Bednarik Award watch list. Marvin Harrison Jr. is the highest graded Big Ten wide receiver at 86.4 as per PFF College. And Tommy Eichenberg has also is also a semifinalist for the Buttkiss Award. Mayan Williams running back has been ruled out for the rest of the season. And Cade Stover was dressed but limited and honestly... I do not believe he played a single snap in the entire game against Rutgers. I did not see him. They had G. Scott in there in his place, and he was in there a lot and was not that great. So I kept yelling at them to put Cade in. I said, Cade on one leg is better than this guy. <laughs> but they didn't listen. They didn't put him in, so it is what it is. But anywho, Ohio State played Rutgers, and... They marched right down the field and McCord threw a touchdown pass to G. Scott, bring the score to seven to nothing. And then Rutz, Rutgers responded with two field goals, bringing the score to seven to six. And then McCord threw a lovely interception right near the end of the half. And Rutgers got a field goal out of it, bringing the score to nine to seven Rutgers at halftime. After halftime, Hancock had a pick six to put. OSU back on top 14 to 9 during the interception there was an illegal block on Proctor and he was injured on the play and left the game Rutgers was penalized for that and then Trey Henderson had a touchdown run bringing the score to 21 to 9 then Rutgers got a touchdown 21 16 then McCord threw two touchdowns to Marvin Harrison bringing the final score to 35 to 16 it was Henderson's third straight game with 100 plus yards and Harrison's fifth time in his career with two or more touchdowns in a single game next week they will be playing Michigan State in Columbus and just a quick shout out to former Ohio State quarterback CJ Stroud who set the rookie record for single-game passing yards with 470 and tied the rookie touchdown record in a single game at five with a comeback win over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And as a Browns fan, I'd love to see Baker Mayfield lose. So it was fantastic. And the Browns game ended just in time for me to be able to watch it happen 
it was fantastic. Anywho, on to more college football. So Ashland played Finley and won 37 to 35 in four overtimes. Just four. It only took four. Their next game is at Kentucky Wesleyan, and it will be their last game of the season. They are currently 7-3, seven 7-1 and three, seven and one in the conference. Hiram played Wabash College and lost 52-13. to 13, And it was their final game of the season, and they finished the season at 1-9. and nine. Yeesh, not so good. And then uh, Larry B. in the chat says, go Mount Union. <laughs> so Mount Union played John Carroll. And I thought this might be a semi-decent game because John Carroll is also ranked. But Mount Union won 49-14. They are currently 9-0. and And they will play Baldwin Wallace next week. <laughs> uh. John Carroll is 7-2, seven 7-1 and seven and one in the conference, and they will play Otterbein next week. Baldwin Wallace played Heidelberg and won 24-21. They are 6-3, six 6-2 and six and in the conference. Heidelberg is 5-4, and 4-4 four, four and four in the conference, and next week will play Capital and Youngstown State played Indiana State and won 19 to 7. Apparently they thought they were playing baseball. And their current record is 6 and 3 and it's 4 and 2 in the conference and they will be playing South Dakota State next week. So they'll probably get their butts kicked. Yikes. But that is going to wrap things up for college football and football in general. So I am going to take a short break and then I will be back to talk Guardians, Monsters, and Columbus Blue Jackets right here on the Show of the Land on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. <laughs> Are you a fan of Buffalo sports? Are you thinking of changing loyalties and becoming a Buffalo sports fan? Do you even know where Buffalo is on the map? Did you know Canada is closer to Buffalo than New York City? Welcome to the Buffalo Huddle every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and 4 p.m. Pacific Coast Time on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. I'm your host, Patty Bax. This is a podcast designed for you, the passionate sports fan. I know you love your sports. Who doesn't? I cover Buffalo sports and so much more by bringing in the human elements. I call it Buffalo sports with a twist. Join me as we take a journey into the world of Buffalo sports. I guarantee you'll fall in love with Buffalo just like I did. Each week, we start with an inspiration, question of the day, a Buffalo fun fact, and a weekly challenge to you, the listener. Come huddle up with me every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and 4 p.m. Pacific Coast Time for the Buffalo Huddle with Patty Bax on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. As we say in Buffalo, Go Bills!
up, everybody? This is Taryn Rodriguez. Are you a fan of volleyball? Are you a fan of Thunder Spikes? Then I have the show for you. Set Point, where I cover NCAA men's and women's volleyball, high school boys and girls volleyball, beach volleyball, and even professional volleyball. Catch the action every week here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Sports Radio. It is your direct feed for all that is sports. It is Philly Sports Talk with Cash and Chris every Tuesday night right here on IE Sports Radio. Your direct feed for all that is sports. Philly Sports Talk with Cash and Chris is the most comprehensive view on Philadelphia sports exclusively right here on IE Sports Radio. You know what it is. Your direct feed for all that is sports. Tuesday night, IE Sports Radio, Philly Sports Talk with Cash and Chris. You're back live with Jen B on the show of the land on IE Sports Radio. Your direct feed for all that is sports. Before I get into the Guardians, Monsters, and the Columbus Blue Jackets, I I almost forgot, I didn't forget, that uh, Ohio State's schedule was released for next season. So they will be playing, in order, Southern Miss at home, Western Michigan at home, Marshall at home, Michigan State in Michigan, Iowa at home, Oregon in Oregon, Nebraska at home, Penn State in Pennsylvania, Purdue at home, Northwestern in Illinois, Indiana at home, and the team up north (laughs) at home, otherwise known as Michigan. (laughs) Oh, they actually have team up north on the schedule. That's what it says. Silly gooses. Anywho, <clears throat> on to the Guardians. So, Jose Ramirez has been named a finalist for the Silver Slugger Award. Andres Jimenez and Stephen Kwan were awarded gold gloves. Andres Jimenez at second base and Stephen Kwan for left field. And Tanner Bybee is a finalist for Rookie of the Year. So good luck to him and good luck to Jose. And congratulations to Andres and Steve for their gold gloves. Second year in a row. So that's pretty awesome for them. The uh, Guardians have also made some roster changes this week. I thought I was done with the Guardians for a while. I was wrong. Tanner Bybee has been activated from the 60-day IL, and in a corresponding roster move, Cam Gallagher was designated for assignment. They claimed first baseman and outfielder of Alfonso Rivas from the Pirates. They signed outfielder Jonathan Rodriguez to the active roster and claimed catcher Christian Bethencourt from the Rays. And then it was just announced, and there were rumors that this was going to be announced because Terry Francona was at the Browns game and received a standing ovation, of course, from Browns fans when he was, it was recognized that he was there. But um, on Monday, they, yesterday, they announced that they have hired Stephen 
Boat as the 45th manager, and they have signed him to a three-year deal. He was the bullpen and bench coach for the Mariners last season. So we will see what happens with that. I'm going to uh, do a little write-up on him for the next show um, with the announcement just coming yesterday. I didn't really have time to get a whole lot of details together on him, but I will I will look up some details and we'll talk more about him next week and what he can bring to our Cleveland Guardians. Still bummed that Terry Francona is gone, but he will, he will still be involved with the organization, so that is good news. A also, prospect Kyle Mansardo, who is playing in the Fall League, hit 15 home runs in the Fall League home run, um, home run derby, and then hit a 433-foot home run in the Fall Stars game. So it sounds like he is doing well. This is probably the third or fourth time I've talked about him hitting home runs on this show. So... Uh, We'll see what happens with that. Maybe uh, he will be the next man added to the active roster. We shall see. So now we're going to talk some Cleveland monsters. I haven't talked about them before. So just a little background. They are the AHL affiliate of the Columbus Blue Jackets. And Wednesday, they played Grand, the Grand Rapids Griffins. And they won four to three in a shootout. Friday, they played the Providence Bruins and lost seven to three. Yikes. And then Saturday, they also.
Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Davidson. It's your boy, the entire lot. And we are the hosts of Fast Break here on IE Sports Radio, where we discuss everything in the world of basketball from prep to the pros. You guys definitely check us out, man. Sunday, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. We got all the basketball information you guys need. So we look forward to you guys listening in. And please do, because we are the best basketball show on this side of the Mississippi. And please do check us out on Twitter at Fast Break ISR. D Lock. Where's our time again? 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. And give you guys spending time on a Sunday. Tune in. What's good, fight fans? It's your boy, Marcus Lowe's Great. Here to give you what you want. Here to give you what you need. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm coming to you live. Straight from your mama's basement with a crispy awesome. White tea. <laughs> we are coming to you live every Tuesday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Powered by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Good everyone, it's Drosky, the host of Heart of Texas Sports on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. On this station, we cover everything in the Dallas Fort Worth, Texas area. From where we cover the Dallas Cowboys, the Dallas Stars, Dallas Mavericks, Dallas Wings, Texas Rangers, TCU, SMU, we cover it all right here every Wednesdays from 9 to 10 p.m. Central Time. Make sure you stay live with me on the Heart of Texas Sports on IE Sports Radio. Your direct feed for all that is sports. You're back live with Jen B on the show of the land right here on IE Sports Radio. Your direct feed for all that is sports. So now, let's talk about those Cleveland Cavaliers. They played the Knicks with a starting five of Mitchell, Struess, Okoro, Wade, and Mobley. Monty Bates scored his first NBA points with a three. At the end of the first quarter, they were down 28 to 24. Then Craig Porter Jr. scored his first NBA points with a two. At the end of the half, they were down 58 to 52. 
the end of three. They were down 86 to 68, and they ended up losing 109 to 91. Ugh. Hate to see it. But, you know, they had a lot of injuries still, so. Jared Allen, Darius Garland, Ty Jerome were all out, and Karis LeVert was questionable. And then they had the same injuries for the next game against the Knicks. This one was in New York. The first one was in Cleveland. And the starting five were Mitchell, Struess, Okoro, Niang, and Mobley. They were down 50 to 49 at the half. Isaac Okoro fouled out with 23 seconds left in the game, but they still managed to pull off the win, 95 to 89. Then they played the Pacers in Indiana. It was the first game of the in-season tournament. Their starting five were Garland, Mitchell, Struess, Mobley, and Allen. Mobley had a double-double with 14 points and 10 rebounds. They were down 53-70 to 70 at the half and ended up losing 121-116. to 116, And it was their first road loss of the season. So they are currently 0-1 in the in-season tournament. Then they played Golden State Warriors at home with a starting five of a Garland, Mitchell, Struess, Mobley, and Allen. They were up 57 to 45 at the half. Tristan Thompson tied Jim Jones for fifth in blocks in Cavs history at 450. And they ended up winning 115 to 104, breaking a 12-game streak of losing to Golden State. They had not beat Golden State since the 2016-2017 season. Evan Mobley had another double-double with 13 points and 10 rebounds. He is having quite the season so far. Hopefully that continues. Um, there were some uh, chemistry issues in the game against the Pacers with the intended starting lineup having their first start with all five of them together. It was Allen's first game back and Garland had returned from his injury. Um, Mitchell missed a couple of games in there. So... They seemed to get it all together towards the end of the game against the Pacers, but it was, you know, too little, too late. And then uh, they they had it all together against Golden State. So that was good to see. Looking forward to the rest of the season now that everybody's back. Their next games are Wednesday, tomorrow, at Oklahoma City Thunder. Saturday, at Golden State. And Monday at Sacramento. So they're having their first big road trip. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I know last year they kind of they kind of struggled with that West Coast road trip. So we'll see. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully having everybody back. They will and they have a nice little break from uh Sunday to Wednesday so hopefully they'll be well rested and hopefully they uh, get out to OKC and adjust to the time difference and all of that with some time to spare and they start out nice and strong but we will see so on to the Columbus crew the Columbus crew are 12 finished the season 12 1 and 4 at home this season they have the best home record in franchise history they have more first half goals than any other team 
in the MLS, outscoring opponents 36 to 14 in the first half. They have 57 goals inside the box, the most in MLS. And they played Atlanta United in the first game of the playoffs last week. And Cujo scored the first goal at 46 minutes in stoppage time of the first half. And then they scored another goal with a penalty kick at 49 minutes, bringing the score to 2-0. to zero. And that was the final score, and they won. So tonight, they will play the second game in Atlanta. If they win tonight, they move on to the next round. If they lose tonight, they will play back in Columbus against Atlanta on Sunday. I was going to watch the game, but it is not being televised for some reason. So I will be following it online. And I will be giving you guys updates next week on how things are going with the crew and where things stand in the playoffs and if they have moved on to the next round. And if so, if the team they will be playing has been decided yet or not and so on and so forth. And uh, I mean, either way. I will know if they're moving on or not by our next show on Tuesday. Um, Because they will be finishing out the series on Sunday. So it's a three-game series, so it's the best of three. So if they lose tonight, then they will play Sunday. If they lose Sunday, they're out. If they win Sunday, they move on. If they win tonight, they just move on. So let's hope they win tonight. And then it doesn't, then Sunday doesn't matter. So, that is about it for the Columbus crew. Um, Their game is going to be kicking off here in about 15 minutes or so. So, wishing them much luck against Atlanta in Atlanta. Um, They have played well against Atlanta for the most part. Um, Atlanta does not play well on real grass, which is what Columbus has. So they had the advantage there above and beyond the home field advantage. They had the uh, grass advantage, so to speak. Um, So we'll see how things go in Atlanta. But they are the better team, so they should be able to pull it out. But, you know, you never know in soccer. You just never know. It can go either way. So, we'll see what happens there. Um, You know, we're definitely looking forward to Sunday and this game against Baltimore for the Browns. We've got a few games coming up for the Cavs and the Blue Jackets and the Monsters. So, I'll be watching out for updates on those and... Then, of course, Saturday college football, and there's college football tomorrow, too. So, um, got lots of stuff to to keep up on this week. I'm also going to get into some college basketball next week. The season started, for the most part, for most teams yesterday. So, I will start getting those details together, and I will start having some college basketball on the show next week. Um, We have quite a few pretty good teams in the Cleveland and Columbus area. So I will be looking up rankings and such and bringing you those updates in the um, starting next week through the season. And of course, we'll get really into it during March Madness if any of our teams are are in there. Um, And some exciting news for Columbus Starting in 2024, we will have a professional women's volleyball team, the Columbus Fury. So once that season gets underway, we'll start talking about them as well. So lots of exciting things happening in the Cleveland and Columbus area. We had uh, a great Saturday with uh, 
the Blue Jackets and Ohio State winning. And then Sunday, we had the Cavs and the Browns both winning. And then Monday, the Guardians named their new manager, and Judrick Will's injury wasn't as bad as expected, so Monday was a good day. Good day. So hopefully the crew can make Tuesday a good day. And then tomorrow, whoever is playing, I believe the Cavs are playing tomorrow. And the uh, Blue J- no, the Blue Jackets don't play until Thursday. The Blue Jackets play on Thursday. And does the, do the Monsters play? Nope, the Monsters don't play until Friday. So... Hopefully, the Cavs will give us something positive tomorrow. I think that's it for tomorrow is the Cavs and some high school, or not high school, college, (laughs) college football. So, we'll be rooting for Akron and Kent State tomorrow and the Cavs. And then for today, go crew. That is going to wrap things up for today. But before I close things out, let's give a shout out to our sponsor, Planet Jerky. Premium beef brisket. They have seven flavors to choose from. It's $10 to $20 per pack. They're different size packages. The $10 are a little bit smaller. The $20 ones are a little bit bigger, like family pack size. And then they offer free shipping on orders over $50. Be sure to check them out at planetjerky.net. You can also follow them on Instagram at planetjerky. And and check them out for some premium beef jerky that is out of this world. But uh, that is all for tonight. Thank you for joining me, Jen V, on the show of the land. Be sure to follow me on X, Instagram, and threads at Believe Land Girl. And on TikTok at Jen, J-E-N-N, dot Believe Land. You can also follow the show for daily updates on Cleveland and Columbus Sports News on X at Show of the Land IE. Next up is the Buffalo Huddle with Patty Bax with all that is Buffalo Sports. Be sure to catch me next Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern on the Show of the Land for more on Cleveland and Columbus Sports right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Have a great night, Ohio. Bye. <laughs>